My name is Grace Petrie and I am from Leicester in the UK in the middle of England. I identify as a lesbian and a cis woman. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I identify as queer in all forms. My latest album is, was, is called Connectivity um, and it came out in uh, late 21 in the UK um, and it was a collection of songs written sort of during and, and sort of about the lockdown. I'll be touring Australia between the 27th of December and the 20th. 1st, 22nd of January. I'm starting at Woodford Folk Festival and I'm going all the way down the East Coast, hopping over to Adelaide and doing Tasmania as well. So lots of Aussie shows. You can find me online at uh, Grace Petrie on Twitter, Grace Petrie Music on Instagram, Grace Petrie Music on TikTok, Grace Petrie on Facebook and anywhere that you Google Grace Petrie, you should find my website and more information than you could possibly need, I'm sure. Well, welcome to Lottle Media and Queer Conversation. In the studio with me is Grace Petrie. Grace, you just arrived from um, the UK in, and you are in sunny Queensland right now. So welcome, welcome back to Australia. Thank you very much. When, when did you arrive? I actually arrived on Christmas Day, um, which was uh, quite a surreal experience to have a sort of very jet lagged uh, Christmas uh, in, in obviously what's the middle of summer for you guys. Um, so we left the, left the winter behind on Christmas Eve and landed in Brisbane at sort of, you know, six o'clock on Christmas Day. So very, very strange, very strange journey. And you are coming back to finish something off that you couldn't finish last time. Tell us about that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So my, my return to Australia has been uh, delayed by um, obviously the pandemic, which um, sort of kicked off the last time I was here. The first time I ever toured Australia was in February 2020. And I had an absolutely amazing time. I had incredible shows. I had wonderful, gorgeous, really generous audiences. Um, fell in love with the country, fell in love with the people, fell in love with the venues. And I was so happy to, that it had gone so well. I was already in the middle of planning my next trip before I'd even returned. And suddenly the virus hit and the rest of the tour was cancelled. And my, my fiddle player and I, we had to fly home on an emergency flight straight into lockdown. And uh, so that was the inauspicious ending to our first Australian tour. So it's really, really nice to be back and to feel like we're kind of getting to getting to finish some things that we were stopped from doing the first time around. And in, in that time, you, you've written your, your latest EP that's out, Connectivity. You wrote that throughout lockdown, lockdown is that right? Right, yeah. So it was a bit of a, a response to the lockdown and the response to not being able to perform live. And um, I think the, it was, it was a very in, inspiring time in some ways as a songwriter, because I was very struck by the idea that, you know, this is the first time in my life that the entire world really was united in the same experience. Um, you know, everyone in the world was touched by the coronavirus, but the experience of being united by one event was in practice that we were all completely isolated from each other. So that juxtaposition between being completely isolated, but all going through the same thing on our own, in our own little spaces, I thought was really interesting and, um, yeah, inspired quite a lot of, quite a lot of songwriting. You've been a um, single songwriter for uh, almost 20 years, not quite 20 years. I think you started in 2006 mm -hmm. and you, you've done um, and produced quite a few albums. You don't want to be known as a political or as a pro protest singer. Uh, while that was probably a very important part in your life, how have things changed over 20 years? In some ways, I, I think... Um... In some ways, I feel like I've become less political as a songwriter, and in some ways, I feel like I've become more political as a songwriter. I think the reason that I find um, a political songwriter is a strange term is because it sort of assumes that I don't believe there can be any apolitical art. You know, I think politics touches everything. Politics touches the way that we live, you know, in a million ways every day. And we write art, we, make, we write songs, we make art about the way that we're living, we make art about our lives. So for me, I think that can't really be divorced from politics. Um, but I also think, I suppose, I used to write in a much more sort of topical, immediate way. So when I first started writing songs, I was writing things that are about the headlines that day. And these days, I suppose I'm writing kind of more um, longer term, I suppose, you know, philosophical, ideological um, ideas uh sort of influenced my songs a bit more than they did when i was younger i suppose i'm slowing down 
your latest album, do you find that it's quite different from your other albums or is that still within your style? I would say that the, the latest album is, is, in some ways I feel like it is quite different because as a songwriter, I've always um, sort of trialed and perfected songs on the road. You know, that's very much the way that I write. I'll kind of, I'll perform an early draft you know, quite early on in the in the in the process, and I'll tweak it and change it, and and you know, it'll it'll develop as as I I gig it, and obviously there was no option to do that in lockdown, so I was really sort of, I felt like the the side of me that is a performer, which is very much where I'm naturally at home, is on the stage in front of an audience, and having that removed, and being sort of, being sort of forced into one place and into one quite different way of songwriting you know I was I was very sort of under the microscope I suppose the songs I was sitting with them very closely and I wasn't able to share them until they were completely recorded mixed mastered released you know in permanent ink there was no way of changing anything so it was quite um uh, daunting I suppose putting an album out like that into the world um but uh it was I I it, I think it I think it challenged me and I think it probably made me a better songwriter. I'm like to play one of your music videos from your latest EP. Mm. Storm to weather is the feeling of the album I think for me. Excellent. It's very Australian too. You're in, on in the water trying to play the guitar. So let's listen to mm. it. Of morning that will chase away the dark Heavy was the winter love and what's become of spring This demon came and got its claws in every little thing Now there are miles and glass and distance that are keeping me apart From the beating of your strong and steady heart And if it sinks, my darling then Just close your eyes When you'll be in my arms again There's a storm here to weather The thunder's coming near Louder than ever And we don't know where to steer And though we can't be together No matter what, my dear I will love you forever And we will dance again next year I will love you forever And we will dance again next year is unfamiliar now it's turned us all around a sailboat in a hurricane and nothing's bolted down and whichever way you turn there is no sanctuary in sight no path to some safe harbor in the night but i am sailing right beside you i am just out of arm's length Willing you remember you are raw of iron strength And I am hanging my tomorrows on the bones of yesterday All I can do to make it through today And when my heart sinks, my darling, then I fill my lungs and I think of when When you'll be in my arms again Storm here to weather, the thunder's coming near Louder than ever, and we don't know where to steer And though we can't be together, no matter what, my dear I will love you forever, and we will dance again next year I will love you forever, and we will dance again next year When it does, I'll be there 
to fill your glass And there's a storm here to weather 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 The thunder's coming near Louder than ever And we don't know where to steer And though we can't be together No matter what, my dear I will love you forever And we will dance again next year I will love you forever We will dance again next year I will love you forever We will dance again next year I will love you you forever and we will dance again next year I, I do love your style it's it's to describe it it's folk music is that correct yeah, I consider, would you describe it that I way I consider myself yep. a folk artist yeah and now you're here in Australia to tour this particular EP connectivity mm -hmm. when you were here in 2020 which cities didn't you get to do? So there's, uh, we only did quite a short tour in 2020. Um, we did um, Sydney and Melbourne and then a few other places along the East Coast. Um, but we didn't get to do Brisbane, which I love. I love Brisbane. And we didn't get to do the Gold Coast and Adelaide. And um, so this time we, we're, we're spreading out much more. I'm here for much longer. Um, and we actually have plans to come back uh, in March as well so that we can do Perth and New Zealand and uh, Port Ferry Folk Festival as well. So Australia is getting more more of me than I'm sure it can handle <laughs> over the next couple of months. Let's talk about this tour now. You on Brisbane? Woodford Folk Festival today. Um, we're heading there in, in when I've, I've come off the phone and uh, we're there for five days. We have gigs all across the festival. So if you're at Woodford, then you can't miss us. Um, and then we're coming to do uh, Brisbane, Byron Bay, uh, the Gold Coast, and then we fly down to Sydney and we have Sydney and uh, the Blue Mountains and Canberra uh, is in that little section as well. And then we're down and then we're across to Adelaide and then we go down to Tassie. We've got Signet Festival in Tassie and then a couple of other um, club shows in Tassie. And then we come up and do Melbourne and Geelong and then we're back towards New South Wales and we finish up in Illawarra Folk Festival. So lots and lots packed in. So you're traveling with your band? I'm traveling with my uh, wonderful fiddle player and he's a multi-instrumentalist and he was on the road with me in 2020 so if you saw me then then you'll have met him. His name's Ben Moss and he's a fantastic musician so uh, yeah we, we have a great time on the road. I'm very lucky to be joined by him. Which Aussie musician you like or have played with? I played with some wonderful uh, musicians while I was touring here um, but I've never played with my favorite. One of my favorite songwriters actually in the world is an Australian um, he's Darren Hanlon. I'm a massive fan of Darren Hanlon and I think his work is beautiful and I think he's an incredibly poetic songwriter. So that's always, yeah, that's a, a big uh, ambition of mine is to hopefully do some shows with him one day. He, I don't think he knows me, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I might send him an email. <laughs> you never know because you just joined TikTok. I just joined TikTok, so maybe, yeah, maybe Darren Hanlon's on there. <laughs> Among exactly. my followers on there, yeah, my media <laughs> followers on there. And I read also that you are a comedian. Is that correct? Are you a stand-up comedian in your spare time, or is that something you just do sometimes with I suppose somebody? I do have to uh, call myself a comedian now. Yeah, I did a show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this year, last year, sorry. Um, so I did a month of comedy shows, no music at all, no guitar, no singing, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I've done a lot of work within music as a as a support act for comedians, and I've worked a lot with the Guilty Feminist podcast which is a wonderful um, comedy podcast, which I know is huge in Australia. Um, so I've worked sort of alongside comedians for a long time and I thought I'd just have a go and see if I can actually, if I can cope without the guitar and if people still find me funny. And I had a really great time. So yeah, I suppose I have to have to own up and call myself a comedian as well as a musician. Yeah, it feels, feels a bit strange. That's a, that's a quite new development in my career. You have worked with or... Um been on stage with Hannah Gatsby, is that right? That's that, right, that yeah, right? I did tour support for Hannah Gatsby, um, both with her um, last show, Douglas, and her new show, Body of Work. I did tour support in the UK, had a little bit in Amsterdam and um, Dublin. So, uh, and she's just wonderful and obviously, you know, 
you couldn't ask for a better if you're an aspiring comedian you couldn't ask for a better comedian to be hanging around with so um yeah had some had an amazing time on those shows just think she's wonderful love it a bit so is there a particular town that you're looking forward to to visit or area that you're looking forward to, to I'm visit really in looking Australia? forward to going to Tasmania I've never been before and I've I've just heard great things I've got some friends who live in Tasmania and uh I've you know I've, I'm just really interested to experience like a whole new part of Australia. So yeah, really, really can't, can't wait to get to Tassie. Have you had time to go and do something like, I'm sure being, you know, touring is fun, but on the other hand, you're visiting Australia, yes, this amazing country, yeah, we, we, we spend and a bit of time, you're touring uh, a lot. Will you have time to do some sightseeing? Up on the beach, um, up here in Queen's Beach, and, um, and we managed to have a lovely tour of Brisbane and, you know, the Story Bridge and the Town Gardens and went down to the riverside and um, had a gorgeous, gorgeous day exploring Brisbane yesterday. And we do have some days off built in my girlfriend is here with me as well which is fantastic so we're gonna get to kind of explore a bit on the days off which is great because she's never been to australia before so showing her the sites fantastic and then you're back you mentioned um, march which is that in conjunction with world pride it's not um it's um i'm i'm playing port ferry uh folk, folk festival uh, in victoria and we have a few other shows planned as well for perth and new zealand um so uh and then i think the blue mountains festival as well so um it's that's a, a fairly quick visit that's we'll just be in and out i think for about two weeks um but i couldn't I couldn't turn it down yeah i was asked to uh, i was asked to do port ferry and you know my agent said to me well you're just a bit in january but i i love australia so i'm never going to turn down an opportunity to go thank you so much grace for joining us and for your conversation